Thank you to Ash and Steph Charzuk for taking the time to speak with me. That, that was only an excerpt of a fairly extensive interview. I had a lot of questions. You can watch the full conversation online right now on our New Mexico in Focus YouTube channel or our Facebook page. Now let's bring the line panel back in. Homeless encampments have become a key discussion point in this issue. City Council is moving to ban them permanently while the mayor is trying to keep the idea alive. But as we wait, other non-sanctioned encampments keep popping up. One of them at Wilson Park, right next to a middle school. Now the city is asking the school district to help out an understaffed police force to keep the park clear. Kathy, is this fair to pull a school district into this? Um, I think we have to pull everybody into it. Um, On security with, issues? Um, you know, uh, security issues. That people are looking for a place to be. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, it's something that we have to deal with, and there's a lot of reasons that people wind up living outdoors in the park. Um, when it becomes a security issue, if APS um, uh, security can and police can can help uh, with managing the security of the park and making sure that that families and students feel safe, we were involved in a meeting when some of the uh, caregivers and parents at, at Wilson Middle School said that, you know, they didn't feel safe with their children walking home mm -hmm. um, by these homeless camps. It's a uh, problem that, that, that we have to address taking a holistic approach. And so I stand by my comment to say that everybody is going to have to weigh in on, you know, figuring out pieces of how we um, solve this this homelessness issue, how we at least manage it so that we can figure out, you know, is it going to be okay for people to be in the park or are we going to move to some sort of sanctioned safe camps where we can then say to people, you can't be here, mm -hmm. but you can go to this other place. Mm -hmm. You know, inter house. yep. Interestingly, <laughs> APS spent about five and a half million on fencing and gates between May 2020 and now. Uh, not all homeless related, but a lot of money's been spent. Uh, Tom, according to the city's 2022 citizen perception survey, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Maybe I do actually. 70% of Albuquerque residents are unhappy with the city's approach to homelessness, and 41% give the city the lowest possible rating. Now, perception is one thing. Reality certainly, as you know, another. Are people right to have such a negative outlook on this issue at this point? Well, I, you know, whether they have a right or not, I think, you know, the 70 percent is is the number that is, uh, you know, kind of defining this particular issue from a perception perspective. Yeah. And, you know, of course, the timing of it, I, I'd be interested. And I forgot to take a look at this as I looked at the Brian Sandoroff's cross tabs. Um, but I really don't I don't know if, um, you know, the question was being asked just as Coronado was being closed down mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. if that was part of the debate because you know closing coronado uh, ended up being like whacking a beehive without a plan of how to you know address all the displaced bees mm -hmm. and so you know it was really uh, not necessarily the finest moment but uh, could have had a big impact in how how residents responded to this particular issue. Despite that, I think that while it could be just a blip, uh, it's pretty significant. And I think a lot of people in Albuquerque and the surrounding area are just saying, yeah, homelessness is the number one issue facing the residents of Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Tom, I want, to, I want to ask you what you make of the um, change over two years here in your experience doing perception surveys with your own company. Um, just two years ago, only 36% of people gave the city an unfavorable rating and now it's doubled in two years. It, it, what does your gut say uh, about that? Is that a blip? Is that an anomaly? Or can you actually double the <laughs> amount of people in just two years being unhappy? It's incredible. That, that was really surprising to me as well, you know, yeah. because typically, you know, when, with our perception survey, we, you know, it's, it's pretty stable as far as the different industries and trust of different professions. But every once in a while, you'll get an outlier that all of a sudden shoots straight up. So, you know, whether or not it's a blip or, um, you know, maybe some of the rising concern, we won't really know until next year. Uh, to see where it charts over that three-year trend. But remember, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were right at the start of uh, COVID. There was a lot of uncertainty. Now that we're out on the other side, yep. uh, you know, emotions are a bit raw 
uh, and people are kind of, you know, feel like that they've been through, uh, you know, quite a bit and we all have. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps that's some of what's reflected. That's a good point there. I think I might buy what you're saying there. That makes sense to me. Uh, Michael, the Gateway Center, got to talk about that. You know, so much emphasis is put on the last couple of years. Certainly expectations are sky high. Any hope it will accomplish as much as the city is promising or, or have they overpromised? or what? How should we consider the Gateway Center at this point? I, I, I as as we've had conversations for a while now about the nature, you know, what is what is what's behind homelessness? Mm -hmm. What is the nature and extent of it? Um, and and again, I would say that um, that clearly it's it's not just an Albuquerque problem. It, it is a national problem. So there are some things we have some control and influence over. And there are some thing, factors that that we have less in control over. Mm -hmm. um, I, in terms of the Gateway Center, in, based on what I know to this point, it, it, it seems to me to be an appropriate um, response. And, um, and um, it, it, but it, you know, one can only hope that, that they really thought this out, have a good plan. And, and when it's implemented, that it in fact will impact um, uh, have some sort of measurable impact on on reducing levels of homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having having background as as a medical social worker, having worked with the Indian Health Service, and and in many cases worked with people who were on the street mm -hmm. in my past, um, it is a population that is extremely challenging. Um, it is a population that that oftentimes there's a long there's a long history. Of, of of family uh, disruption, um, violence, um, substance abuse, and it, it, over generations, mm -hmm. in some cases, and that kind that 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 nature of of working with someone who who who's been impacted in that way, um, and, and you know, there's a whole host of. You know, we, we know what the, what's going on with them and, and from the standpoint of the conditions, mm -hmm. um, substance abuse and mental disorders and, and all that. That, that is that is an extremely challenging population to to intervene with. Um, so it's not it's not for the faint hearted, you know, and, and right. we, we're, we're going to be looking for some saints out there to really work with them in a way that's meaningful that 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 respects them mm -hmm. but engages them and shows them that there is there are some other ways mm -hmm. in terms of options for them to get out of homelessness and you you and and, and there will be good well, sorry michael I didn't mean to cut you off there my fault if you anticipated my next question let me throw it to kathy uh there's a service this center will have it's called a quote unquote a first responder drop-off end quote where police can take individuals they've picked up who don't belong at the hospital or in jail. And the city's community services department director says this is a huge step in helping people who are intoxicated, suffering from mental illness. This sounds logical. This sounds something like should have happened a long time ago, Kathy. I'm, I'm curious your reaction to this. Oh, I think that, you know, it's going to be great. And again, it needs to be all of these um, um, interventions. And so being able to keep people from going to emergency rooms or going to jail and dropping them off at the Gateway Center, I think is gonna be really great. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, our goal as community members is to make sure that um, city is accountable for maintaining good policies and practices and procedures, and that the things that we're being told are actually get executed in the way that, um, that they envision. And I also think that, um, you know, speaking of saints, uh, my ears pricked up when I heard Michael say saints that we're going to need some. Um, I heard on one of the council um, testimony, public testimony about a church um, who is uh, told a tale of, of two different encampments. And there was one that that was picked up outside their gate that, you know, all the things that, that we've heard about happening with encampments was happening. It was dirty. Um, you know, there was some unwanted activity. And then he talked about the camp that the church was planning on the other side of the fence, which is going to be for uh, people to be able to be in their cars. They will have uh, sanitate, you know, uh, ability for people to be able to use the restroom to get a shower. Um, and so the church 
is taking that on, paying for it. And so maybe we need to look at some of those other kinds of, of uh, opportunities. And uh, as Michael uh, mentioned, we need to find some saints and uh, perhaps churches who might say that, you know, what can we do? Everybody's going to have to figure out how we get in to solve this problem. That's right. Of course, the big news this week is we the moratorium is out. <laughs> the veto has been broken. Uh, Wednesday night, City Council voted to get homeless encampments back on as a real, reality again with Trudy Jones uh, changing her vote from 6-3 and didn't have enough votes to hold. The mayor prevails there. I'm going to talk about this in my closing thoughts. So thanks again to our opinion panel. This is an extremely complex issue. We're look, working to bring you every perspective as the city grapples with potential solutions. Now, there are certainly plenty of complex issues impacting our environment right now, too. And water is at the top of the list. In part two of her exclusive interview, Laura Paskus asks Governor Michelle Lu Lujan Grisham about the state's long-term water plans and the obstacles that stand in the way.